They will be moving on with the win over Panda Gaming. A very strong performance through all of group play so far. Great job from Complexity. Love to see how this team has come together. They go ahead and take the first seed out of that group. Looking very, very solid with that 3-0 performance. You also just heard the crowd a little bit. FaZe Clan taking down Elevate. Here is the bracket we know so far. It's all beginning to spell out in front of us. Splice Hyper Games at the top part of the bracket. Fab Epsilon, four European teams. And guess what, just below them, Infuse awaiting to find out who they'll be facing. Five European teams in the top half of the bracket bucket. Yeah, if you're looking at that and you're like, oh, I understand the beer pong format at the top, but what's going on with that <laughs> bottom weird snake thing? Well, that's the loser's bracket. Yes. Keep in mind, guys, this will be double elimination. So if you fall in the first round, second round, even third round of the winner's bracket, don't worry. You'll get a chance for revenge to make your way through that lower bracket. But man, this is looking tough. You can see how it's going to play out. The Europeans meeting at the top. The good news if you're a European fan, you're guaranteed a top six finish wow. because it's either going to be Splice, Hyper Games, Fob, or Epsilon moving on into that winner's bracket final. So great news for the Europeans, most likely. And then we're going to see, sorry, winner semifinals. Then we're going to see Rise Nation and Millennium. I think that's going to be the key match to watch so far in round one as we're waiting on the remainder of the results. I mean, don't sleep on Allegiance versus Luminosity as well. Allegiance has looked exceptional so far this weekend. They have yet to drop a series. Luminosity, they get 3-0'd by Fabi, and, and now they're the team that are coming into this bracket. They finished that second seed in their pool. Another great North American battle. Well, to be honest, I wasn't sleeping on Allegiance. I was sleeping on Luminosity. True. I think Allegiance has been the better team all weekend long. Agreed. They Agreed. are going to be my favorites going into this one, which is crazy, considering that this is a squad that formed just a few weeks ago for the MLG Orlando Open, then had to play through an open qualifier just to get here. And you want to know some great news, Chris? What do you got for me? If you're wondering when all those bracket matches begin, the Bravo stream has just began to introduce their first bracket matchup. That one will wind up being Splice versus Hyper Games, if I'm not mistaken, to kick off all our bracket matches here this weekend. It's going to be pretty incredible. Now, that match should be coming up here in the yes. next 15, 20 minutes as Complexity just defeated uh, Panda. Panda, thank there you. you. Go. We're going to see how all of this plays out on the XP zone. We have no games to go to. Everything just finished except for a game five, which will be coming up shortly. That will be most wanted in Giants. Once again, that match does not matter. Both teams are mathematically eliminated from the bracket, but they're still playing for pride. Now, I'd love to hear the thoughts from our analysts, not only on that phase elevate series, but now they've seen the bracket themselves. Maybe give some predictions. Gentlemen, thoughts on this crazy day. Well, it's good to see some European teams making it a, making a deep run in, at the Call of Duty World League Champions. But, of course, I know we really want to talk about that phase versus Elevate series. First two games were pretty good. Third game was a complete blowout. Let's start things off with the Search and Destroy because we already gave our thoughts for the most part about that hard point. So going to that S&D, obviously we kind of gave you know our thoughts on what we thought was going to happen. Did anything really surprise you guys from what you saw in that Search and Destroy? Nothing too crazy. It just like FaZe outplayed them, especially in that round 11, just making some smart decisions. Uh, I mean, it was I mean, it was kind of what we expected. Both these teams pretty top-notch search and destroy teams. Goes all the way down to that round 11, and FaZe is just able to clutch up. It was a back-and-forth search and destroy. Joe actually predicted Elevate that they were going to win the series 6-4, to four, the map 6-4. to four. I said FaZe is going to win it 6-5. to five. Since I won, Joe's going to have to give me a popcorn after this match, but... <laughs> FaZe Clan looked absolutely great on that last map, and I don't want to sound too biased or anything because you guys know I'm a part of FaZe, so I have to pull them out. Check it out, guys. Can we get a close-up on these socks right now? I just got these the other day. I'm so pumped about them. They do have some crazy socks. They have look... a receding hairline. Maven wears a wig. We got all sorts of characters here. FaZe Clan hasn't dropped a single map in this tournament. I really don't want to be guessing them too much, but they're 9-0 right now. If they could hear me, I know that I'm over the loudspeaker. FaZe, you guys are killing it. Keep it up going into the bracket. Yeah, it's great to see these guys performing well, especially with the inconsistencies that they've had throughout the year. But look, th this is a team, these FaZe members, they're not happy with anything aside from a first place finish. They want to win it all, so I know that's still a step-by-step -step process for them, taking it map by map.
But really quick, I want to talk about the round 11 that we just saw between Face and Elevate because I thought it was a pretty ballsy call just to stack the top window like that. What did you guys think of, of the decision to attack that part of the map? Well, even before that, I mean, Zuma pops overdrive and just hits middle of the map. Like, that's pretty ballsy in round 11 because the thing with overdrive is, is if you go out there and you get into a bad position, you basically give up first blood. Um, so it's definitely one of those risks. And then obviously, yeah, like you said, Elevate was sort of in a, like a 2-2 two -two split setup. It was, it was a little bit different than what we've seen. And FaZe was just able to split it, just jumping through that top window, catching Elevate off guard. I think Zuma's mistake actually put Elevate in a worse spot because Zuma made a shot off in the middle of the map. He stood there in the middle, and Elevate was stuck in a tricky spot. Do they push out B? Do they try to flank around A as a team together? They ended up sitting back, and they're in this little bit of a limbo stage, and then FaZe Clan were able to just push out to the B-bomb site, get control of their building, and then when Elevate decided to make a play to go back to the B-bomb site, Enable was there to look over Zuma, Taps was getting a couple of kills, and they ended up closing out the round. And you know, I thought Elevate were in a good position because Felony had kinetic armor ready to go in round 11, a key specialist ability in the game. I think he died before he was able to pop that off, but regardless, it was a very impressive win from FaZe Clan against Elevate. But guys, I, I want to take another look at the bracket and get your thoughts on everything that we've seen so far. Of course, we know that we have Splice versus Hyper Games. I believe that's going to be set up over on the Bravo stream, but once the bracket pops up, we could give our, our thoughts on it. As you guys see how all the action is going to develop. I mean, we know that European team, it's guaranteed to go deep. But how far do you think a European team can make it? Are we expecting grand finals, loser bracket finals? Where do you realistically see a European team ending up here? I, I expect one. To, I, I think one will finish top three. I know it's pretty a bold statement. But to me, just having all the European teams sort of on, on one side, that's good for a European team. They know what they're playing against. They're used to the different play styles. They know these guys. They play against them every day. Really, when we talk about the European struggles, it's not dealing with one North American team. It's playing them back to back to back. That's where they've had all of their struggles coming to North America. They can play with the best, but they can't beat them consistently. Joe, I need to ask you a question. Has a European team ever placed top eight at a Call of Duty championship? I think top eight. And Black Ops 2, but never deeper than that. Well, they're guaranteed to at least get top six if this bracket is displaying itself correctly to me. I'm expecting Splice to do a lot of damage. They've looked like the best Euro te European team so far. Millennium as well, they've looked really good. They're looking great with Mir. I know he's been playing exceptionally well. And, man, they got to play Rise in that first match. It's going to be a tough match. Rise is also looking good, too. I certainly share your sentiments. I, I think Splice are the number one European team at this event. Now, also, I want to bring your attention to not only FaZe versus Infuse, but look right below that. Optic Gaming still waiting who they could possibly play, but we could possibly see FaZe versus Optic in round two of the winner's bracket. That's brutal, man. That's brutal, but I believe that slot will be filled with Team Envious, something we've discussed, and, and that is, uh, you know, that's two of the best teams, probably, I think a lot of people predicted, two of the best teams in the world right now. So. This will be a round one showdown, definitely. Yeah, you're going to see FaZe Clan, maybe Envy, maybe Optic. They're going to be moving on to that second round. These could be considered the best three teams in the game. Maybe you could add Ryzen to that mix, too. But they're going to be playing each other before they even get to the top six. That's going to be absolutely nuts. I, I can't wait to see how the action develops. I mean, look, that, that's an MLG or Orlando Grand Finals rematch. Envy looking for revenge, trying to send Optic Gaming into the lower bracket early on. Now, Optic Gaming, of course, they've kind of cruised their group stage. They're looking good. If they do wind up matching against Envy, if Envy do wind up atop their group, how do you guys see that one playing out? I mean, if you look at Orlando, Envy did beat them in that first best of five. And to me, the big thing was is Envy took that hard point off of them. I think I, we've sort of discussed it. The way Optic Search and Destroy is looking right now, I think they need to take, if it's going to go to a game five, they need to take at least one Search and Destroy to be able to beat this Envy team. I mean. Envy is such a good team, and they keep getting better every single event. And to me, one of the key things has to be that search and destroy, right? We all know how Optic Gaming is going to perform. We all know that all four of those players are going to play well. With Envy Us, we know J-Cap's going to go consistent. John's a really consistent player. Slasher, it's going to come down to my boy Brian. Apathy, you got to step up. You're the X Factor for Envy Us. If Envy is going to be winning this matchup versus Optic, if this does happen, I'm looking for Apathy to drop some numbers. And, and Apathy to me, and when you look at sort of history versus Crim6, he plays exceptionally well yeah. versus Crim's teams. For some reason, he's, he just loves playing versus him. I don't know what it is, but he always does exceptional. Yeah, I think we'd all agree. We're very much anticipating the matches to come, but still, just to set the scene, we got to toss it back over to the XP Zone host, Puckett and Jack. What's up next?
Well, fellas, we got a number of matches coming up next. Of course, over on Delta, you can watch Game 5. It just started. That is going to be Giants versus Most Wanted. Spain still fighting for their first match win of the tournament. But over on Bravo, we are moments away from seeing Splice versus Hyper Games. This would be the first bracket match of the 2016 Call of Duty World Championship. Presented by PlayStation 4. I'm looking forward to getting that one underway, but our alpha match we did just see. It was Elevate going up against FaZe. FaZe have been told time and time again that this was the year that Elevate just continued to have their number. Well, guess what? FaZe beat them there. I do know Zoe had a chance to speak with Clayster after that crazy match. So yeah, I have Clayster joining me here for a quick word. First of all, of course, congratulations to not only that win, but also the first place in your group. Was that something you guys expected? Um, first off, thanks, Maven. I love you too. And then uh, also, it's something we expected. We came in here with a game plan. And to not drop a map in pool play, especially against Elevate, who's beaten us all year long, uh, it says a lot about our confidence and our preparation. Uh, you know, my guys were up here all pumped about the way we played. And, you know, beating Elevate, man, it just it meant a lot to us. Well, that is great to hear. Now, if we're looking back at your performance during the Stage 2 finals, um, you guys seem to struggle there a little bit. Let's be polite about that. But, yeah, you guys seem to struggle there a little bit. So what has changed? What was your main focus and practicing coming up into this event? Um, well, I think the mentality of everyone has slightly shifted. Uh, Zuma last year didn't have the best placing at champs. Enable got third, and me and uh, Tash got first. So we all have this mindset that we really want to win this event. And the amount of preparation and practice that we put in since uh, Orlando into this event is, is I've grinded the most that I've ever grinded with any team ever. Uh, we probably are the most prepared I've ever been for an event. And you should be like that for every event. But if you win champs, it's more than if you won every other event combined. So uh, we're break, bringing out all the stops here, breaking out everything we want to do and what we want to use and we want to show people who FaZe is. All right, we can't wait to see that. All right. Now you just got super fired up here on stage when you just won that game. Uh, do you think you can like ride that high into the bracket place too? Oh yeah. Uh, one of our main focuses was just to make it to bracket play and to sweep our group without dropping a map. Um, you know, me and, me and Attach are losers bracket players, double elimination players. So going into this double limb bracket, we don't plan on going to the losers bracket and we plan on winning all the way to the straight finals. And we wish you the best of luck. So thanks a lot for joining me, and we are heading back to our casters. All right, that was Clayster talking with So, and Clayster was all smiles. I was actually watching as our analysts were talking. Clayster ran out in front <laughs> and just opened his fake chest again. <laughs> he was so pumped, and he yelled at the audience, everyone that was out here to support him. That is what Clayster feeds off of. And oh, yeah. You know, last year we saw Clayster walking away with the biggest chunk of the million-dollar prize pool. That was $400,000 or $100,000 per player. This year we have upped the ante, Ooh. $2 million. And you can see there is a huge difference for the teams that played in groups versus the teams that made it into our top 16. You're guaranteed at least $30,000 all the way up to that first place prize. And... Last year, Enable, his squad, they walked away with third. I have a feeling he's going to be going for a much bigger check. The question for me is, is it going to be 120? Is it going to be 150? <laughs> or will he be able to break into a quarter million dollars there with a championship visit? If you told me 10 years ago that me playing Call of Duty 2 would be something that I would follow for years up until now, and now we see people playing for $2 million on Black Ops 3, I would have slapped you in the face because I never thought this would happen, but it's pretty darn cool to see. Thank you, Vonderhaar. Thank you, Activision. Thank you, Black Ops 3, and everyone who is supporting the Call of Duty World League all season long. For now, though, guys, it's time to jump back into the action. Bravo had just a short delay, so we'll be bringing you to Hyper Games versus uh, Spice. Spice any moment. For now, though, let's take it over to Delta. This is Giants up 3-1 over Most Wanted. Let's take a look is as powerful as this active camo with these score streaks. Methods is actually just watching down on gold side for anyone flanking around. It is currently two all in this series between Giants and Most Wanted. Both of these teams unfortunately finding their way out of the championship but looking for bragging rights here as Methods actually hits a snipe over on Twiz watching gold side and Most Wanted were unfortunately 
losing nine rounds of search and destroy in a row in this series before they finally got one on the board. Methods left in a predicament as Sammy manages to answer back on BL fire. It's Sammy versus Methods. And now, right now, Sammy, this is Sammy versus Methods. This is such an important engagement or a round win for him because if he does this right, he will have the car and he's already have some score streaks. So he can have a full, full set of score streaks. He's going to check the bomb. Is it going to be in time, though? It is. Oh, it's not. I'm sorry. No. The Ninja Diffuse ha uh, came out there on, on the most wanted side of things. Unfortunately, Sammy not really timing that to the best. I think he expected someone to go and challenge for it, but in that situation, most wanted want to try and sneak some rounds on the board and get their momentum rolling in this search and destroy match. So he wasn't going to waste any time as far as the bomb plant goes. Just hoping that he could have anticipated whether Sammy might have pushed forward if he did get caught in mid diffuse. But here we go as Methods is going to push all the way round on a different side of the map, it looks like he is going to push right through into Palace. He has that HCXD available, just making sure no one does come through here. Might see some exchanges in the middle of the map. Methods opens up, but two kills go in the favor of Giants. Methods and Tohor pick those ones out. Twiz answers back onto, to onto Tohor. Sammy fully streaked out, still 2v2 for these two teams. And now I'm very surprised, right? You have Giants with these full set of streaks and they're up 3-1. You would really want to see them start using these streaks to kind of get farther into those rounds. They, ha they do have the numbers advantage, and if they can win this and go up 4-2, use these set of streaks that go up 5-2, and it, it, this, this game is fully in their favor. We're going to hop on board, though, with Blindfire. He is in this 1v2 situation, right? He's going to do all he can. He has to plant the bomb, and he doesn't have too much time to work with. So this is definitely one of those situations as a player that you don't want to be in because we love Game 5s, but unfortunately, something just kicked off that we cannot miss. Folks, it is your first championship bracket match here at the Call of Duty World League Championship 2016, presented by the PS4. It is a European battle, Splice versus Hyper Games. On the back, and he's actually going to have Josh backing him up, and Josh has him at the same time. As we jump on board, too rated as he now looks to break in the top mansion as we roll in a P2. Very early in this map, number one hard point. Best of five in the winner bracket. Lots of money on the line. Rated at the back, trying to control this back statue for the spawns. But you see the, the bait and switch from Hyper Games was so good there. They should be able to try and get some sort of control. Splice, you see on the minimap, they're spawning pretty far out. But Joe is buying them so much time. Lots of back and forth so far. Joe moving like he's made out of mercury there, continuing just to snap on the people as quickly as humanly possible as we stay on him through the respawn. Let's see what he can do. Four and four, hitting bottom mansion now. Looking for a 22 seconds left to go. He doesn't have that much support. Incoming push from Hyper Games at the top. They seize one. He's trying to snap on the second. Quicker will take him down. They almost gets that kill now. But Splice are set up and ready for this rotation. Yeah, those end of hill gunfights are very important, and that's where you try and extend your time. But Hyper Games winning those need to win these rotation fights as well. I don't know if I agree with challenging that gunfight. You need to get to that back satellite in order to lock down spawns. A little bit of a mistake, in my opinion, from the Hyper Games side. Quicker, you don't want to cut towards middle alley. Zed misses some shots, has to reload, gets taken out as well. Splice looking very dominant, but you see the number six, which is Brain, on the minimap, trying to wrap back around, catch some players off guard. He's able to pick up two Brain. Able to get these spawns, but no, the, the gunfights are won by Vance in the hill. It doesn't matter. All that fighting for spawns and Splice still getting all of the hard point time. They certainly are now. You see Bans doing serious work for him as well. He really is heating up here. And uh, just a quickly touch on something, Tip, you may not have seen. Josh actually came over to me before this game started and asked not to be watched. What? He said, he says, I'm not, I'm not having a great tournament. I feel like I need all the help I can get. Was he self-conscious? I think he was. It was just a little <laughs> bit like he's feeling like he's not performing to his usual level, and it's maybe just a superstitious thing. Yeah, okay. That's not really the mentality you want going into a huge event like this. But regardless, back and forth gameplay. Splice able to get a little bit of an oh edge goodness. on that Bans. window hill. Bans. But Bans absolutely taking over for the back satellite spawns has Kinetic to work with. You're going to expect that on the bunker rotation, the Money Hill. So much time able to be won. If you can chain it together with this one at Rocks, you can really open the game. Well, Bant's gained a lot of fans this year, and not just because he looks like a model, but because of his gameplay coming into this one. Let's see what he can do. Still alive, still holding Satellite for his team. And uh, it's going to be one or two more pushes actually coming in from Hyper Games before both teams are going to really start thinking about making a move. And I wonder if Splice is going to push. It's 26 seconds, a lot of time to give up. But with how far they've spawned out, they can't afford to really make a push and lose bunker. But look at this. 
quicker than you has managed to get through splice he's broke them down and i'm wondering whether or not they can actually make this play come through this may be so significant we're going to stay on and watch this i know not a lot is happening they have no idea he they... has the connect to work with the first kill on Bance, he's taking his time. I love this play. Able to, oh, oh my gosh, he doesn't get it, Bance! <laughs> able to slide around, he chokes. He could have made the play for his team and break the setup, but he absolutely chokes the situation. Bance, oh, Bance looks, kinetic. Like, looks like he popped Kinetic, but still, that should have been a kill from Quicker. Hyper Games now has to try and battle back in. Kinetic is wasted as well. Quicker just can't do anything with that rated. Going to push them out with the Tempest. Should be able to break back in. Hyper Games going to get some time back, but oh man, that should have gone in Hyper Games' favor. Oh my goodness, Rated now unleashed. He's got a player in front of him. Good play coming in. Josh trying to get it as well. Brain coming through once more. We may see a side play come through, but Brain actually needs control first. Getting out the side here to begin with may mean he only gets one or two kills and gets traded, which is the reason we haven't seen it quite yet. He is saving it if he wants to use it. I mean, he might have to actually use it on a different hill now. Oh, my, oh my goodness. gosh. Don't need a snipe yeah. when you're able to pop one burst like that with the XR2. Nolson following up with two of his own. And the score, the lead change, going to go into... Never mind. They're just going to take the time. <laughs> they ruined my sentence. I'm it's, done. It's already. It's all fresh. <laughs> We're starting again here on the P1. And Nolson looks like he's heated up. Hyper Games have come firing back into this game here. Splice looked really dominant when you've got players like Brain and Nelson on five streak and also seeing that side now come into mid here. He's going to be looking to start getting his streaks. 100 points more. He's looking for Josh. They're trying to get against his trophy system as well. He's desperate to get this one. You can actually see him backing up and staying away. He's desperate to get this one locked down. Yeah, I really enjoy how he's playing this one. These streaks are so important, especially going to the third hill on rotation, that window hill you see him looking at. He able, he's able to get in the, the hard point, get that 100 points. He has the Wraith on too. A bit greedy to use this in such a high-stakes situation, not able to get that one. But back and forth, not too much time earned. The, so much contesting going on. The rotation should be happening. He's going to save those streaks, but Josh winning a huge fight at the back towards Statue. You really want to try and control this top side. It gives you a great vantage point over towards this bottom mansion hill. Bantz breaking in with two again. They can't seem to stop the guy in these hard points. They certainly can't. He's now holding top mansion, and top mansion so crucial for this hard point as well. You see teams completely fighting over it to the point where you're wondering when the action is actually going to take place inside the hard point. But now again, that rotation kill is coming in. You can see them flooding through the back, coming through top mansion, looking to break in now. It's going to be Quicker versus Bant. Quicker's going to get that first kill as well. Sees another player not going to go down as it is traded away. Raided comes in at the same time, and he's free firing now with a HBK. Knowing players are coming for him, he picks up that kill. Is he MP'd? And he's now free firing again, looking for Quicker at the front door raided slapping a new clip in ends up throwing a melee where he maybe grips the controller too tight as brain picks up three to rip them out of the hard point but it doesn't matter as both teams keep flooding and keep going and josh is screaming at the top of his lungs crazy stuff back to back three from either side splice able to secure a pretty decent lead at about 30 seconds the scrap time going to hyper games brain has the streaks to work with i'd really like to see him pop them here Hellstorm first, he does it. He calls it out. One player spotted in the hill. He's going for two, though. Only able to pick up the first person. One more player around him at the back side. Like, can he catch him, though? No, slides past him. Has the XR2, but Joe able to win that clutch gunfight. Hill control in Hyper Games' favor, but they're getting cleared out. Splice has the spawns. They should be able to get a lot of time and extend the lead up to about 200 here. I know you guys can probably only hear a little bit of this, but trust me when I say I can hear Splice getting loud and furious now. Their blood is up. They dislike the fact that Hyper Games almost took the lead off of them, and they are really getting into this one. Josh and Joe combining for more kills. Raider getting another one as well as he screams and lets Hyper Games know what is occurring. And Hyper Games are slipping further Further and further behind. Sweat is now beating their brow. They're worried about losing this one after all the hard work they've put in. Brain was doing such a great job controlling. They're trying to control the spawns, but Splice basically groups up together, fights for the back, and when you're spawning so much closer, that's why the lead is where it is now. Splice trying to fight for this next side of rocks. Brain just doesn't have too much help towards the back alley, cannot get the spawns. It seems to be the Hyper Games lineup is, is stressing out a bit. They're spreading out too far, not helping each other for, uh, for the map control that they need in order to get the spawns, and Splice taking complete advantage of it, all of them taking over. 
Well, incoming lightning strike that has actually pushed the guys from Splice back into satellite brain trying to make a little bit of work here but he misses everything and bant is coming back for revenge as they keep missing each other like ships in the night and now you can see it's still heating up here splice are in almost lethal range they are looking for this one here comes the rotation as well it could be an opportunity for the guys on hyper games to make a comeback and who's this big play coming down it might be massive room but no joe says give me those scrap points boy get out of here Next, we're going to focus on these gunfights in the bunker. Hyper Games with initial control should be able to hold off these players, but another lost gunfight quicker has been in multiple of those types of fights in this map and has lost almost every single one. Now, Specialist coming into play. Zed able to answer back with a heat wave. So Hyper Games uh, able to stop the push for now, but lots of Specialists on the side of Splice to work with. Tempest for Nulsing, but gets stunned out. The attack was coming into play. Not enough trophies to protect them. And Bance with three again breaks into the bunker. And where did the control from Hyper Games go? They have such a nice setup, but Bance opens it up three again. He did it at Bottom Mansion. He's doing it at Bunker. So much fighting back and forth. Hyper Games gets control again, and no one can seem to retain control, but it's Bunker. How do they not hold these? I'm not entirely sure. I know a lot of specialists got popped in that area. Tempest became ineffective as well. We saw active camo and heatwave and kinetic all used in a very short period of time to counter each other. But you know what? It is actually going to be Hyper Games who do come out slightly with the more control from that in the bunker hill. It does bring them back into at least a game. But here's the issue, Teep. It's 2-2-6. They are within finishing distance here, Splice. I wonder whether or not they're now going to bury this one. Yeah, you really expect a team like Splice to do something like that. The Scythe should be coming up very soon on the side of Hyper Games. And there it is. Brain decides to pull it out. This is the moment where they need to make plays. Unfortunately, doesn't catch that player at the window. And Splice makes him lose that specialist basically for free. Three players in the hill. They're looking to close it out. Some Semtex is coming in to get an intro kill. But I don't think Hyper Games has what it takes. They have such a good setup in the hill. Multiple players with these HVKs. They only need eight more seconds. A little bit of a contest going in. Rated doing such a good job playing his life, waiting for his teammates now to help him out, and they should be able to wipe five more seconds. It might rotate over to Mansion, but uh, Splice seems to have this in the bag. They certainly do, and I've got to say, that Scythe play coming in, actually, I'm surprised he sat in that corner. You would think he'd try and back out of the hill a little bit, spray over his teammates' heads, and right now, if... Hyper Games want to do this. They have to do it flawlessly. We have seen a few specialists that could help here as well. Quicker actually goes to the reload, but his teammate dies because of it. They may be all in. Heatwave coming in from Zed. He needs to do something amazing with it. In he comes. Looks for it. Pops it. Takes down Bats with the one time as well. Looks up top. Goes for a pre-fire. Not able to get it quite either. Nelson comes in. AK5 gets shut down, but quicker than you is coming at the same time. And Hyper Games are in, but is it enough body? Zed now coming in. Both teams flooding. They know this is everything, and I think Hyper Games may have just done enough. And oh, no, sorry, Splice have done just enough that should lock it out and it does 250 to 216 and band stands up and lets them know we've got this sit down shut up impressive performance from splice in that one and really it was such a back and forth map the fact that these teams were able to break in the bunker multiple times and swap control really cool to see but for me the defining factor the and there we have it. We are going to have our winner on Bravo. It is Splice. They take it. But Hyper Games at one point brought this to a one-point game. I remember <laughs> seeing it 112 to 111. It was yep. basically the halfway point in the game. And then Splice, the commentators mentioned it. They looked like they just got angry, Jack, and yep. they cruised away with the rest of the game. I could hear Rated yelling from across the venue. One thing I do want to point out, that was our first bracket match. Splice and Hyper Games, these guys have faced a lot in the online leagues. Oh, yeah. They faced on LAN as well. When these guys matched up at the Gfinity Summer Masters Grand Final, I casted it. Splice destroyed Hyper Games 4-0 to zero in the best of seven. Four to zero. That's yes. that's no fun. I no. will mention though, when I came into the tournament, I was talking to some of the top Europeans and I asked, other than Millennium, who are you worried about? And they said, Well, Hyper Games, meh, they're probably not gonna be too much of a challenge. It looked like they had more than they expected in game number one. But that's enough for Jack and I. I think we should hear from our analysts what did they think about our first hard point of the bracket. Thank you very much, Puckett. So they're at the first rotation of hard points on the map. It was a pretty close game, but once the second rotation began, Splice really started to build a lead on that second match in hard point. What were some of the key differences you saw between both the teams, and how come Hy Hyper Games was never really able to catch up in that game? I just felt like Splice were out rotating them. I think you said it right. I mean, it was 110 to 110 after that first bunker hill, 
and then by the next one it was about 220 to 140 so after that first bunker hill for three or four hills hyper games is only really able to pick up 30 to 40 points and you just can't do that in a situation like this i mean it just seemed like splice were not only out shooting them but they had so many tacticals and grenades used out from the entire game yeah, I didn't see any like uh, tactical mask being used by the guys on Hyper Games. I didn't see many trophy systems being brought out. Now, Sensor, there's a point in the game where it was looking like Hyper Games were going to be able to mount a comeback and maybe tie the game up. It was that final bunker hard point. They were able to get the four intro kills. They had the early positioning, but how come they weren't able to hold on? Like how Joe just touched on a little bit, it did come down to the tacticals, but we could talk about strategies, tacticals, all we want. What I want to talk about is Zed. I'm a big fan of his music, but I'm not a fan of his gameplay right now. He's playing poor. All right, he started the game, I think, 15 and 27. Everybody else in the lobby came to show up. Splice, all the players are playing well. They're all about even. All the players on Hyper Games as well doing the same. He started to pick it up at the end, but when you're going 15 and 27 on a stronghold hard point, you're not getting your job done. I know from speaking firsthand, I've had a lot of games where I started off that way, and I'd be putting my team in a deficit. So they picked it up at the end. It became a really close game, but it did come down to the fact that one of the players just wasn't playing that good throughout the map. And I think that's the thing, right, is just the slaying wasn't there for those three or four hard points when they needed it. When it came down to that bunker hill, yeah, they seemed to be winning most of it, and that's what sort of brought them back into the game. But Splice was just too stellar, especially in that mansion hill. They also stopped a little bit in the mansion hill. I noticed that Hyper Games had a control for a minute, and I think it was quicker. He went bottom mansion, and he watched the driver, but he tried to reload his gun instead of just holding the position. So the teammate on Splice went through the driveway, right past the player on Hyper Games. He killed one of the guys on, on Hyper Games, and then they ended up getting control of the map. So if he was just a little bit more patient, held it down for his team, they would have been able to make the comeback, but they put themselves in a really horrible position, Revan. And guys, we got some highlights from you throughout that first map. And just to add on to Sensor's point, at least in my opinion, European players have always been like the montage type of players. And I can remember way back to the early days of competitive Call of Duty, where every time I'd watch European players the play right compete, here, Revan. They would Look, always the challenge, reload. right? They would never give up the aggression. They would always go after them with, with the pistol after. How come European players have, well, I feel like as time has gone on, they've started to go away from that mindset, but it's still a little bit there, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. They always try to have, like, that sort of style. They're yy -ing all the way around the map. I mean, they love it. You can hear them when they sort of turn on a player. They love getting pumped up. It's just the European way. And I'm all for that. I love seeing crazy montage plays, but sometimes you just have to go back to the strict tacticals of the game, like those little things that I just mentioned again right there. He had the enemy dead to sights and he tried to do the reload. 11 bullets is more than enough to get a kill in. And that was like one of those little things that I noticed throughout the game and, and the reason why Splice was able to clutch up at the end and win the map. And, and that's how things unfolded in game one between Splice and Hyper Games. That's it for our analysis as well. It's time to hear once again from the hosts over here at the XP Zone. Jack and Puckett, take it away. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great breakdown of that first game between Splice and Hyper Games. Now, Bracket play has begun. We've seen a majority of our groups get all figured on out, but we do want to provide one more update so you all at home can stay in the loop. First group G. Matches are about to continue for this group. It's Envy, Orbit, Cloud9, and Vitality fighting for those top two spots. Right now on the Charlie stream, they're in the band of protect for game number one between Cloud9 and Orbit. That is the match to basically decide it all. You expect Envy to make slight work of Vitality to take that first spot. Yeah, you expect him to. <laughs> is it going to happen? We'll have to see how this one plays out. On the other side, though, I think it's really important to see, will it be Team Orbit, the only team left for Australia? They're their last hopes. Can they get in, or is it Cloud9 with World Champion A? going for his second team with another bracket run. Over in Group H, though, we know this one is about done. Optic yep. Gaming, they are definitely going to be making their way through, and we will see who else is able to join them. Jack, I know you were peeking at the brackets. Who's going to be our second team from Group H? Well, Group H is going to wind up being Optic Gaming. We'll pull it up for you on your screen. Complexity, though, in that first place spot. They're the ones with the undefeated 3-0. Unfortunately, LDLC, rough event for them, and Panda Gaming don't make it on in. So since we first showed you the bracket, there's now been some updates. Let's go ahead and bring that one up for you at home so you can see where do Optic Gaming and Complexity fit into this thing. Your winner's bracket coming on through Optic Gaming, awaiting their winner in that round. And as you can see, uh, the bracket on our end, there you go, fills on in complexity at the bottom half of that winner's bracket. Just two more teams to fill on in. And once again, that'll come from Group G. So if you're looking at 
that fourth match, that will be Optic Gaming most likely against Envy, unless wow. somehow Envy loses to Vitality. The bottom one, that is going to be Complexity <laughs> playing the winner of Orbit or Cloud9. <laughs> I would love to see Aix playing against Complexity. We'll see how yes. that one plays out. But later in the day, we will keep you up to date on all of those matches. I'd love to get you back into the action, though, as we have three matches kicking off right now. Two of them are in bracket play over on Alpha. We're going to see Rise Nation taking on the boys from Millennium. Yep. And this is a huge match to start things off from Europe. Let's go full screen with them right now. And Mad Cat holding on. One more in front. Finally going to whiff. But nice job locking it down. Wow, he just summons up a storm with the Tempest in that bunker. Fantastic work as Millennium do breach 100. This is the Money Hill. It's the first time we've seen it here in our first map of the series between Rise and Millennium. And the UK side are demonstrating just what they are capable of here in their debut in bracket play. Miracles trying to hold the edge here. They're doubling up almost on Rise Nation. I, I Am I going to eat my words? Are they going to lose the hard point here to Millennium? I felt so confident about Rise Nation coming into this one. So far, it is all your purple squad leading the way. They're leading on the kill feed as well, picking them up, and it's Miracles wrapping from the back, able to find one. Going to push out top bedroom, see if there's anything rocks. So far, nothing at home, but a couple coming on the cross, able to win that one-on-one -on -one versus Slacked as Millennium keeps adding to this tally. Can they do the unthinkable and take out who throughout most of this game until Envy came out is considered a top two team in the world? Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Clint. Let's just keep eyes on this next money hill. It's going to be a while away, and That's I want to see you know, Rise Nation, if they can just keep things contested, keep things level, who knows where this game could go. Those 60 points could be distributed primarily in one direction, and that completely turns the tide of this game. For now, though, 130 is a very convincing lead for Millennium, and the European side of me is getting just a little bit excited. But still, Miracles finds himself his 14th. This is a two-kill streak for him, but Jeez. most commendable to, to Miracles. Yes, he's looking fantastic, and that third kill was spectacular, but it's the 1 minute 22 on the hill. Yeah. This is not something that you typically expect, even from Swanee. Swanee is not someone that gets a whole lot of time on the hill. However, his stand-in is finding a whole new role for himself. He's not filling the shoes of Swanee. He's wearing his very own pair. They, I think they basically told Miracles to come in and do his thing, and the other three were going to play around him. And that's kind of a nice thing when you have someone to come in, come in and can play the objective. It's like, okay, that yeah, makes sure. it easy. This You're is... telling me I have to shoot my gun at people more? All right, I'm down. I'm down. Get the hard point. I'll cover you. This works. And it is working. I mean, look at this. This is just growing exponentially, closing in on 160 now as the contest does come in, but immediately Jerd and Tommy, the deadly SMG duo, are just laughing in the face of, clack, of Slacked and Classic. I was about to call them Clacked. Doesn't really work. <laughs> 50 Tommy, away from the Hellstorm. Tommy's now fully streaked out. Eight in a row. The camo gets popped. Give me number nine. Turns for number ten as he is lighting it up. Tommy, the veteran, doing it all. Let's see if he can keep it going. Too easy for Tommy looking for number 11. He's done so much already. He evades the nade. And now continues to find himself a little bit of a safe haven. It's time to invest those streaks, trying to make that number even bigger. Double digits for him. Madness as he's going to throw out the lining strike, and it does find one. Classic. Down and out. Forced to watch from the sidelines for a short period of time. And this looks like another. Look at him. He's just lining them up, and there's so much pressure. You know how I said, don't get Jeez. ahead of yourself, Maven? It's 200 to 78. They needed him to reload to kill him. If he was gone up, he was winning every single one-on-one. -on -one. He is 30 and 16. I'm going right back to Tommy. He has been a man on a mission throughout the course of this game. They've broken the 200 mark. They're looking to close this out. What Millennium roster are we seeing right now? Millennium, they are often hot. They are often cold. It's really hard to pinpoint them. However, when it comes to the high-pressure scenarios, your stage one, your stage two finals, your COD XP, they find form that we do not find elsewhere, and they are demonstrating that here today. And that is just the first map of the series. A best of five ahead of them. And Rise Nation, where are you at? They could join the 100-point club here in bracket play. The scariest thing about this, and I know game one is not over, but the scariest thing is Rise Nation over nine months has never, ever been able to become a strong search and destroy team. Whereas we have seen Millennium at times be great. So this, is a, this makes the deficit even scarier. But the question is, can Millennium close it out? We're seeing Slack to win a couple of gunfights here as they're getting close to breaking the 100-point mark. I mean, they really need almost the perfect rocks, at least be able to contest it all, and then lock down bunker, this, a bunker perfectly. This is over, Maven, and the reason for that is the fact that they have to basically get a perfect hold on, uh, on rocks and somehow get to bunker on the rotate. Right now, Millennium could go ahead and set five, not five, that would be very impressive, a four-man hold on bunker and just dig their heels in and win off the next rotate. If I've learned one thing, 
in Call of Duty. Never say that. Oh, as, as, as I'm about to say that, I think Tommy picks up three, but now you have a fully streaked out. Ooh. Guns it up for Slack, but finally get a drop. I believe he ended at eight and did get those full streaks. The, the reason that is huge, as we go back to Slack, if for some reason they lose control of Rocks, they would have been able to streak it out. But with 10 seconds left, they're going to have to rotate over, and the break is going to have to be in. The first gunfight going to go the way of Millennium. They just have to win these first entry kills, and it should be all but over. I am going to look at the push here from Octane, though. He has the Tempest. Can he find the angle? He's got one to the left, one in front. The streaks are out. Octane could be toast. He feels the need to push in. He somehow tags on, finds one. Who's there to follow it up? It's Looney coming in the back. Is this the break they need? He's got Heat Wave. It's Heat Wave on e -Wave. He's able to win it, still trying to hold on, but now it's Mad Cat with the Tempest. A couple shots here, and this could be over. One more wave of pushes. It all comes down to these next few kills, and Mad Cat is possessed. Takes five with the Tempest, just lines them up and knocks them down, puts a bullet into the back of Jerd just for giggles. And now Millennium surely have picked this one up. They had a couple of chances, Rise Nation. I don't even know how this game isn't over yet at this point. They're keeping it contested. He's even got a Cerberus oh, and he needs Lord. it, but Mad Cat lives up to his name. He is mad, he is insane, and Millennium will find 250. Woo! Tommy and Mad Cat. Oh my goodness, that is Millennium playing with a fill-in, but taking you to our quad box. You can see in the upper right, game two underway between Splice and Hyper. Game Splice up two to one on their way to a third round win if Joe's able to pick up the kills. Over on Charlie, though, that's where we're taking you next. This is Orbit versus Cloud9. It was close, but now it looks like Cloud9 starting to build a lead. Let's see how they're doing it in their first game in the best of five of all the spawns surrounding Grandma's. Kinetic armor, come, kinetic armor comes through, but Laceville gets shut down immediately. And if you're just tuning in from COD XP, we have a pretty landslide victory of a lead here, starting for Cloud9, 170 to 90. We've seen big plays out of Nimble on the opposite side for Orbit that's been giving them a little bit of life. And as you can see, he's taking point in the hard point for the Australian team. However, being overwhelmed soon by Lacefield's hip fire, he's gonna team kill his teammate though, making things a whole lot easier. Nimble can just sit pretty. Nimble now, top grannies. He's got his slippers on. He's looking very comfortable. I think the kettle's just boiled. He's very much enjoying his time now in grannies. He may even have a biscuit or two. Or three. Or three. He's got three teammates. Hey, man, he's got to have three or four, right? He's on holiday, right? Big kill there. Can he get a second? Beautiful stuff here from Nimble. Assault and eggs both fall to his mighty SMG. 18 and 20 for him. But this has been a fantastic hard point for them already. They're doing a lovely, lovely job of maintaining that time. Smoke out power position now he's going to be able to get anyone who comes into that window in the final 10 seconds of this hard point as they etch ever closer to that lead set by cloud nine and there it is orbit finally answering back on that grandma's hill we saw in the first rotation just how excellently cloud nine held it which is what gave them a big part of their lead here and every map in this series is so important ladies and gentlemen whoever wins this moves on into the group play into bracket play from group play for call to dxp swift is all with that tempest we just jumped in at the right time as he got that big kill there on Assault. Now, how is this going to play out? 45 seconds left in this hard point, and wow, Heatwave comes out, Laceville brings down Swiftazor. We've got Ricky and Bakabet contesting the hard point together. Massive melee, what back and forth between these two teams. Orbit just still behind. 34 seconds remaining now on track's hard point. Swiftazor shots out, that AR ringing true. Doesn't manage to find its mark. Let's jump on board with Lacefield. Still holding on to tracks. Great job from C9 here on tracks. They've held on to this one considerably. They're just about to break towards that 200 mark. So we start to enter the business end of the game. Orbit trying to answer back, but Lacefield just too strong. Lacefield, of course, being taken down by Swift Azor. And as we get into Train Hill, just the scrap time of this, we're going to be rotating towards mid map. Expect to see your AR players trying to post up the chest high cover with their ARs. Great power position to have when mid-map has such long lines of sight. Lacefield, though, trying to act as a buffer zone for this rotation. No one from Cloud9 in position just yet to help him out. One on the hill, but he cannot engage that safely without fear of an AR player such as Swift Azor or Zeus on the opposite side of the map to take him down. Let's have a look at Zeus. His perspective sitting in that power position. Top Grannies does a good job of getting those kills. Trophy out. They're protected from nades. Goes 1v1 with Assault while tagged up. Brave move. Managed to pay off for him. He has abandoned top grannies to move down to ground level. Strong shots on Lacefield, doesn't manage to get the kill there. But it does look like we have Orbit still in control of this hard point. 158 to 209. Zeus doing everything he can to keep those players from top farm away. But look at that, by banning the position, incoming Lacefield from behind takes him down. We'll stay on board with Zeus, he's got Heatwave at the ready. Does it like now, Cloud9 in control of that central hard point. Zeus stayed alive for such a long time and just acted as just an issue of pressure in that power position with his AR. 
Cloud9 couldn't poke out of cover for too long. However, a lot of that hill time is going to be detrimental to them. Now, as we rotate over, we are in Junkyard Hardpoint contested for just a moment, but two kills go in favor of Cloud9. Two more look like they're soon to come, even though the camos popped. That alleyway push doesn't look like there's too much coming from it. The kinetic armor response is going to work out so well for Lacefield and Assault, shutting down everything Cloud9 has, or Orbit Gaming has to offer coming through alley, and they're going to do it all again. They're setting it up. Lacefield's waiting for it, gets the first shot, an assist and a kill. They're just feeding him streaks. Wow. If he gets one more assist, they're not winning this game. Amazing defense there from Cloud9. 240 now. They're absolutely walking home with this one. What could Orbit do in these dying moments? The defense is just too strong there. Right. Lacefield finally taken down, but 243 to 161. It seems like too much of a mountain now to climb for, Orb for, Cloud for Orbit. Excuse me. Cloud9 ever closer to that victory. 250 it is, ladies and gentlemen. Cloud9 taking the first game fairly convincingly. The 250. And you can see Lace Field from Cloud9 getting fired up as they take out the Australians in the first game of the best of five. Remember, Orbit is Australia's last hope to have a team represent them in bracket play. Cloud9 trying to lock up their position there. But over on the other side, Jack, what do we have in our second screen? We have ourselves a bracket play match. This on the Bravo stream. It's Splice up against Hyper Games. And look at your scoreboard. All tied up at 3-3. Three to three. It's a 2v2 scenario to close out this round 7. The one versus one situation, right? It did that to try and earn streaks, but the blind camo could have gone bad quickly. Looks like a 1v1 situation now if you're just joining. Looks like Joe oh. able to get the better of that one. The one burst coming in. Splice wins that one. Oh, and wow, that was a quick kill. Yeah, straight to the face. We're about to see this again, and I think he hits every single bullet for it as well. But a tense 1v1 coming in there, actually, for the two of these. Brain takes it straight in the face. I think he just punched two holes for eyes and a little smiley face with that one. <laughs> what a great clutch. Splice has the 1-0 lead in the series and gets a round up in this Redwood search to destroy. I feel like Hyper Games, this is a do-or-die map for them. You cannot be going down 0-2 against a team like Splice. Camo coming into play. Nolson, we'll see how he uses it. Rated very riskily uses it the last round, but it pays off for him. I think he has a dart to work with as well. Well, what we can see now, another triple flank coming in from Splice. They're clearly not happy that we've seen the Hyper Games push a bombsite a lot. However, we might see a catch out here, and Rated is going to go down quicker, pushes straight through mid-map. And now the teams have actually switched positions from the starting positions that they were originally in. He's trying to plant this for inside as well. I love this from Quicker Than You. If he can get this down, he doesn't really have as much cover as he would like. He does have a body standing over him here as well. It is dangerous. Zed's now going to pick up that bomb and run away. But he goes down as well. Hyper Games, they took a risk. They took a gamble. And it hasn't paid off. And now Brain has to walk into the lion's teeth to try and get this one out. It was the perfect play to plant for the inside, but he had no one there looking over for him. Bance just pops in, takes out the bomb carrier, and nothing they can really do at this point. They're down in numbers. So they need to try and get this bomb down. Only 23 seconds left. He's going for it. He's yeah, managed they, they to sneak go. it out. Go. Go, you Brain, you fool. <laughs> but look at that, number uh. four. It looks like Josh is going to be all over this. Going to wait, see if he can spot this player crossing over the bomb. Nothing yet. Uses his tactical smart. Checks the player on bomb, calls it out. Nolson able to pick up one, though. Takes out the bomb planter, and all, now they just need to run away. There's no time to get the plant, and that's going to do it. And Hyper Games threw it away. They had control of the bomb site, and both sides have done this now. They get control of B. They take just a little bit too long, and in this situation, he just didn't have a teammate watch over your planter, and that's yeah. one of the most annoying situations to be in. You're... You know, you don't have your gun up, and your teammate just leaves you. You get taken out, and then they lose the round? I think Zed may have gone out to help him. Though. I, was, I looked at it because Zed was in the air when we rejoined him. But I think what Zed did for some reason was go way out and look towards middle rather than, look to, rather than play on a Q angle yeah. and look towards stairs. Zed decided to kind of flood out and try to get the other angle here, which actually meant that he died as well when he pushed back in. Unfortunate series of events for Hyper Games and did a Joe, huge mistake. Did Joe see that? No, yeah, he definitely saw it. He definitely saw it. That's why he's backing up. He's going to make sure he called that out to his teammate. He spotted at least a couple of players on this flank. Will they spot him, though? Hyper Games trying to play as aggressive as possible. Splice, just straight up strategy here. Going for the B-bomb site. They don't check the back, the far back of the map. Joe picks up one, almost picks up two, but quicker able to answer. And now they need to retake. They don't have too much time to work with in a three versus three. And if Splice plays this correctly, this is over. It is, and uh, I just want to point out that the coaches would pop there by Zed, and all three drones have run in about as useless place they could possibly do. 
It's now a two versus two, and they've gone down. It's just Bantz. Bantz in a one versus two. He's looked for one here. He's got glitch. He's going to try and get away with it as well, but no. Has now got away. This might be just enough. Bantz, can he clutch it up? He picks up one as well. Take the bomb, Bantz, and you're good. You're golden. Oh, and Splice what? are going to take this one down. It's easy in the end. What was that? I don't know. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. A sloppy round, but Bantz gets the it's one. It's getting easy in the end for Splice, but as we take a look at the breakdown, you can see things are heating up here in the XP zone. It's Puckett and Courage bringing you all of the action as we be jumping in between all of the games. In the bottom left, it's Orbit and Cloud9, one of the last two remaining group stage matches. One of these teams will advance to the bracket. The other will be going home with $15,000. In the bottom right, Envy is determining whether they will win their group or whether they will get the second place in Group G. And in the top left, where we're heading right now, it is Rise Nation going up against Millennium. Rise taking the first round of Search and Destroy after falling in Game 1. It was a wild ride, Maven. A 100-point lead for Millennium to close it out. Absolutely insane. Madcap was definitely the front runner for us. And already in the first round of second map here, we've already seen the search and destroy is going to be spectacular. Octane nearly lines up too. Woof, Rise Nation will finish. It's the cherry on top delivered by Classic, and that will be the second. But already, we are two rounds into our second map, and it's, it's evident that we have got a real series on our hands. You seem doubtful of what Rise Nation were capable of on Search and Destroy, but already they're reminding us that they are in it to win it. Well, this would be... Okay, now to be fair, teams don't scrim Search and Destroy very frequently, if ever. But sure. the past month, they really have been. So I'm curious, maybe we're going to see some improvements from these guys, because they haven't... Uh, that's been their weakness throughout the course of the game. They've been great in the respawns, average in the Search and Destroys, but right now looking good. 2-0 lead up on Millennium. I have no patience for anyone that doesn't practice Search and Destroy. It's common no commonly known and often said that S&D wins champs. And when there's $2, on the $2 million on the line, you practice Search and Destroy. Now, Classic, looking to get the flank on Jed, and there's no way the Irishman is going to be checking that one. One more bullet will do! No, he's so hit! That's a genuine one-shot. <laughs> <Another comes forward. laughs> oh, beautiful positioning from Jed. That's just smart Call of Duty, and that's him a very, very rewarding kill. It's funny because with the verticality of the past two titles, you're always expecting people to go up. When somebody goes prone, your crosshair, it's never ready for it. You're yeah. never, ever prepared for it. Solid stuff there, but it is going to be now. Millennium with a 3-2 advantage, so we'll keep eyes on with Looney and Slack and see how they look to play this one out. And, and just coming back to it, not to harp on it for too long, but the, what's so smart about that as well is he's well aware that he will actually be hidden by the gun's model. Like, by, by proning in that position, you can't even see him. It's great to see from Jerd, smart positioning from him, and so far, so good. But just 25 seconds left, and the bomb still has not gone down. The responsibility has been handed over to Slack. He has to be trying to get that bomb down, but he's just locked out in the cold. It's going to be all down to his teammate, Looney. Can he go ahead and catch one? Yes, he can. That's going to maybe enable the bomb to go down. There's just 15 seconds, and Slack just leveled out the complete game in so many 10 seconds and what was that slack just explodes through round what who am I? I i tried i tried to get to tommy's pov as he's in the 1v2 i knew he had a snipe and i knew he had the angle i didn't realize that slack saw him when he crossed back i thought he was going to be all he had to do was hit a snipe on the bomb planter and he was good i didn't i, I heard the snipe go off not thinking they were going to push him which which makes a lot more sense because if they go for the plant he hits one nice shot it's just then running for the trees but not able to get away. So now it's going to be Millennium back to offense. They've yet to get around on the board. Rise Nation firmly controlling this one. Uh, I want to check Slack real quick. He's the one ability in the game. Hmm. So he is going to have Glitch currently. Really, really solid start from Rise Nation. And it's good to see. Promising a spectacular series. Jerd, though, just, just hover through the window and catch the first blood onto Classic. But it looks like a sniper has come out and hit the palms of Octane. And he's teaching Tommy how to snipe, of course, missing the shot in the prior previous round, and now Octane does teach him exactly how it's done. Well, Octane's probably going to come and try to peek window, so he was about to say he should have an angle on Mad Cat here momentarily, but I think the timing just a little bit off, checking his close corner, making sure nobody's home. He just saw one to the right, just trying to find a kill. They always back the window. Now the snipe's going to come in, but he gets pushed. Nice job there helping out Mad Cat, who was probably about to get his face ripped. Now it's Looney, 1v2, Ooh, the timing so, so poor for Looney as he gets caught trying to wrap back the lap. Yeah, they needed to get that one. I think Tommy wished he had slightly longer arms there for that fist bump to Miracles. He literally was just reaching across, like, sudden, sudden realization that he couldn't quite make it. But that will be the first for Millennium, and that's, I mean, that's much needed. Seeing 4-0 on the board can be so damn demoralizing, and the idea you have to go for that uphill struggle, pick up four or five consecutive rounds is just a little too much. Yeah, it's a, it's a big round, for sure. Uh, let's... 
let's go with Slack. You know, he, he's 6-2. Yeah. He's, he's leading all Slayers. He, he has Glitch to work with. He's got the bomb. Let's see what he's able to do. I'm just going to blow up the minimap for a second to see what the pressure looks like. It looks like their edge is about to get pushed. That's Jurd peeking, headshot, Looney. Sorry about you. Nobody looking over his close rock. They just flew at him. Beautiful execution. And Classic is quick to find the head of Tommy as well. Okay, so Slank has obviously been given this responsibility of trying to get that bomb down. But what's impressive is not only is he trying to complete the objective, he's also top of the scoreboard here in the lobby alongside Jurd. Both fulfilling very different roles and doing a fantastic job at it. Now, the bomb will be going down, and this is going to free up Slack to go roaming. Miracles, is he going for that peak? It looks like he might be lining up for it. I, that's kind of what I thought. Doesn't look to be the play, so let's get back to the person watching the flank. That's Octane. He sees one. He's like, all right, I am, oh. am out of here. I'm going to take a dip. Refreshment. Wrap back to my teammates as he knows they're coming. This is an interesting place to snipe. <laughs> it's unique. I'll give him that. And Octane, I feel like... He could have the jump on Madcap. Madcap's still checking for him, and oh, just slides away. Look at this, 20 seconds. Time's becoming a factor as well for Millennium. Two versus two now as Miracle's finally One. able to get the better of him. He's actually able to find two. Now it's Slack. One versus two. Ten seconds left. Should be good to go if he can <gasps> find the kill just it. enough. And the glitch. Ooh. Spectacular work, and the bomb will blow up. Glitch saves the day millennium it looks so damn good for them but all he had to do was catch the bomb plant and glitch does help him get to that goal beautiful execution and they do find four look at this one man versus the world and honestly Matt, mad cat had a chance to save him he yeah. got off at least two bursts or so there could have could have likely got the kill but just enough an accurate shot there from slack secure the round and i didn't see exactly how long they were on the bomb he might not have had it anyway I, i'm not oh, sure he how did, really he hopped did. Absolutely. okay absolutely okay i was so worried he was about on the it for like, he was on it for like i think I, ooh, hang on it was red, it was a red five when he got the kill i couldn't tell you can't say with absolute certainty you're right well let's uh about, i was about to switch to slack because he was pushing up mid map but he's gonna get caught classic is there as well he might get caught Yep, that's two down quickly. Millennium coming alive in this round as they do have a 2v4 advantage. Now going to be on Looney and Octane to try and make the play. Can they do the impossible here in the 2v4 with under 60 seconds to go? Well, it's certainly not looking likely. And the bomb's going to go down and actually will go down this time. Now, Looney, what have you got for us? Mad Cat is in a prime position to just go ahead and get that backstab, but Octane's already drawn blood. Miracle's down, but Tommy's there to revenge. And now Octane, man against... I think he's going, he's going off. Yeah, he's out. He's out of there. He's not interested in giving them apps anything additional, and so that will be the second round for Millennium. For a second, I thought he was going to go up <laughs> off the tree for the sniper. I'm like, why the hell? Yeah. <laughs> By the time you get up there, it takes Style forever. Points. You'll Style have, points, Maven. You know, 15 seconds left. But yeah, you saw Looney peek and just evaporate. That is the power of the Shiva. Incinerated there with two bullets. You got Jurd on the screen. It locked does. in. Mad Cat on his right. We'll see Rise Nation as well. I mean, no one, no one seems too amped up. Everyone just seems locked and focused. It does just make me happy, actually, to see the Shiva slipping into more European players' hands because it's something that we've really have, just hasn't cropped up too much in the regular season. And then you come and you scrim with the North Americans, you start realizing, hang on, hey, hell, this is pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've talked a lot about Mad Cat versus Octane in this particular series. Right now, you know, it's Mad Cat kind of getting the better of him since he's, he's five and three <gasps> right now. The shot's over the top. Surely he'll finish it. Octane, there you go. I mean, Miracles gave him a 14 opportunities there to get the kill. Yeah, I mean, Octane, the fact that he even went for that repeat felt rather audacious. There were two Millennium players peeking him, and he still goes for another jump shot. This time, he does take Miracles out of the equation. And already Millennium against, again, on the uphill struggle. And it's only going to get worse. Classic catches Judd in the SMG battle. Mano El Mano, and just two do remain, but they've managed to make it evil. Of course, it's Madcap to level things out. It's now going to be two versus two, wrapping the edge. Might be able to catch one. You just saw him in the corner. He's tagged up, trying to stay alive. There's one behind as well. Cannot make the play. Both dropping. And Rise Nation now one round away from tying this up at one game apiece. We could have a real series on our hands. The fact that Search and Destroy is looking so good for Rise as well is, is rather, I don't want to say surprising. You said already that it wasn't their best game. I'm, I'm surprised. I okay, am. okay. And, uh, okay, I guess 
I'm surprised they're winning in this fashion with it being 5-2, but it is difficult to know exactly what to expect from Millennium when you, when you have a last-minute fill-in like they do, but so far, certainly outmatched this particular game mode. I was just so pleasantly surprised by the way that their hard point played out. Uh, just the fact that it, did lo it didn't look like the same Millennium. It was not M Miracles trying to be Swanee. It was, the, it was something new. It was something rather exciting, again, that could lead to inconsistencies, which is what we're experiencing here. Certainly not looking great. As it looks like Madcat's going to be under too much pressure. Such an aggressive hold. This is an offensive defense. If ever I saw one rise, Nation rise to the occasion. But it's a 1v2. You've got the bomb, and you've got the best ability in the game in Heatwave. Heatwave was designed to clutch 1v2s. <laughs> now let's see how he decides to play this. Oh, Lord, the timing there. The question is, did Classic see him? He's going to get caught. He might get caught planting, but he does have He's the Heatwave if they push. If he gets it off in time, this could end up working out perfectly. He gets the plant. One's going to push. It's the camo, though, and Classic has him. Oh man, oh man, had he not had camo, that could have been a very different exchange. But Rise Nation will find themselves the equalizer. That's going to make it 1-1 here in the best of five. Woo, and Nation. a convincing one as well. Yeah, they, they, they get it done in search and destroy. It, this is a little bit backwards if you would have had Rise it. Nation answering back will make it a 1-1 series in the best of five. This is the first round of the bracket for both teams over on Alpha. Same thing goes for our match over on Bravo, but Splice a 2-0 lead looking like they could close this one out. They're up 12 points in the first half, but remember we still have another five minutes to go there in the bottom right. Vitality was hanging, in fact, beating Envious in the first hard point. They're trailing just a bit. But in the bottom left, this is the match we need to watch at the moment. It is round number five. Cloud9 trailing 3-1 in game two. Five shots. Unfortunately, not enough. Swift as well brings him down for the fourth round win, Orbit. Walking away with this one ever so slowly. We're now coming into the sixth round. Orbit having a stunning game so far. Great teamwork from them. C9 just nipping at the heels. We've had a couple of good rounds for Orbit, but it's Cloud9, they're so close. There's not too much between the two teams. And if you're coming in from the XP zone, we're heading into map number two between Orbit and Cloud9. And Orbit, who just had a very disappointing punishment on that hard point, is looking like they're having an incredibly tactical search and destroy here against Cloud9. First Lace time we've seen Lacefield actually opt out. He's not using snipe now, he's running bomb. He's put down the, uh, put down the snipe, which is an interesting choice. It was working out for him. I feel like it was, but this is a, I think this is the important mix-up that Cloud9 need. They need to mix up something. They need to make the change. They need to mix up something, find some kind of a working formula here because the end of this series is going to be deciding who moves on in the tournament and who is eliminated. This is huge between Cloud9 and Orbit. Both players, both teams, though, all players just playing back for information. As you can see, Ricky was able to hold Grandma's house, the alleyway to his right, and broken from that position on the top of the tank. But now he's going to opt to go towards middle map. Tag up one player, call that out to his teammates, who are all still playing relatively passively on that B Street with the bomb. Swift Azor, though, calling in the lightning strike. All players stuck outside. It's going to punish him for it. And now numbers advantage goes to Orbit. 35 seconds remaining with Cloud9 on offense. The odds are heavily stacked against them here. Thanks and Assault charge going through versus Nimble and backing back. Shots out for both teams. Cloud9 with the advantage. Can they get in there before the tags clear up? Ricky takes down Nimble. Perfect flank. Ricky gets back and back as well now. Jump on board with... Oh, Snow. Hey, back to Ace. He actually fell there. My apologies. Swift as all. Brings him down. Ricky now. Charging another bomb. Assault going for the arm. Nades out. Assault can be brought down there. Last man, Ricky. Here comes the flank. Swift as all going around the rear. Zeus now buying his time. Two seconds remaining. Absolutely stunning round there. Slow and steady. Certainly won that race for Orbit. Have to give props to the lightning strike. It reset the bomb as well, which sent that all the way back to spawn, which meant that at least one of those players had to pull back to collect that one. Yeah, and in that situation, with all of them playing outside, you can kind of get an idea of, hey, maybe they didn't know that the enemy team had streaks, or was anyone running flak jacket? It just seemed like all of them except Ricky were outside and vulnerable to that lightning strike. Also, another thing, that late game grenade. You'd yeah. think that nade would have been thrown at the beginning of the game, so that wouldn't have been a consideration even at the time, maybe. We'll jump on board with Bakabek here. Potentially the last round here for Orbit. They're looking very strong in this SND. ANZ region has been criticizing itself rather heavily on their SND performance thus far at COD Champs. Potentially proving that one wrong here. Bakabek shots out, gets Lacefield heavily tagged. He does get the Orbit. kill. We got Bakabek leading the charge, finding one kill. Swift as well with the Elkar 9 is able to take down Lacefield. That's going to award them ample time to put this bomb down. And we're seeing Swift Azor on a 12 kill streak. This man is 12 and 1 and has been unstoppable in the search and destroy for Orbit. We'll jump up with Swift Azor, see if he can't add any more to that tally. 
Hakes now dancing around. Superb shots from Swift as well. Absolutely not to be phased. And that is the final round. 6-1. Orbit answer back in a spectacular way. Crazy gameplay from both teams. Seed 9. There you have it. Orbit GG is going to tie things up over on our Charlie stream. Now you can see we're going to have Bravo and Delta currently going up. But let's take a look over at Bravo. This is the bracket match. And Splice is dominating 16-4. I think this match is over. But we should all just keep a lookout for Splice. How dominant is this team truly when it comes to bracket play? As Splice opened this one up in a ridiculous fashion and Hyper Games have had to claw, fight and pray for every single point they can manage to get back. And it's 2 minutes 48 left to go and it is one incredible mountain they have to climb. This is match point for Splice looking to end up this map with a dominating victory. If you missed it earlier, Raided starting off on a huge streak. Abs three piece after three piece. Hellstorms, lightning strikes, getting all the passes. You can see on the scoreboard he has four dunks to his name. Most of those came in the first minute or so. Hyper Games doing their best to battle back, tacking on ones here and there. But Splice not giving an inch. Again, quicker, caught out again with the drone. Going to be back in the hands of the yellow on that minimap, wrapping it over towards Palace. The pass is coming in, just wasting as much time as possible is all they need to do. Nolson using that dart to pick up a few, but it's I think it's too little, too late. Only two minutes to work with. You need 12 points. They can't even get the drone. They certainly cannot, and they are setting up, though. The kills are starting to come in for Hyper Games, so we'll be keeping an eye. Can they do the impossible? Rated already picking up one, and he has slowed down significantly from his start, but to be honest with you, anybody would. And they're trying to get through. Rated, though, cleaning it up, trying to get that third kill at the same time. Do get one point off the bat here, but they're going to need to start hitting doubles, and Rated breaks out the scythe. You're about to hear it rip into the flesh of Hyper Games. All he's going to do is sit at this top hut while his teammates try and make a play. The vision pole's coming in and able to win one of those gunfights. Can he pick up the second? Has some teammates to help him. Another one is tacked on. The, the lead is now the same at 12 for the side of Splice. Raiden picks up two with the scythe. They have middle map control. Nelson doing his best. He's been the one sort of saving grace on the side of Hyper Games, picking up a bunch of kills. Chaining together, Bantz with this drone again, pops in the easy one. They haven't missed one the whole game. Hyper Games may, may have missed, I think, one or two. A minute left. This one's going to be over. 18 to 5 with the chance for more. Yeah, it certainly is. I think that we saw, I think Nolson actually pushed forward. He was desperate to try and get that spawn trap on so they could get a relay going. But it's kind of the case we saw in one of the earlier games. You know, he's pushed out, he's trying to do the work, but they don't have drone control. He's kind of hoping it's a Hail Mary play at that point. Yeah, the wraps. With 32 seconds left, we're going to go ahead and say congratulations. Splice is moving on to winner's bracket round two. Hyper Games will be the first team to drop down into the loser's bracket. But over on Alpha Jack, we just saw Millennium and Rise Nation kick off. This is game three. It's all tied up. Where are we at right now? Well, a lot of people are shocked to even see Millennium have a map in this up to game three. It's tied one to one. But the bigger thing right now, Millennium are up 4-0 to zero in this uplink, and they're about to get another dunk right here. Millennium, where is Rise Nation in the response? This is so sick. No, this is not where is Rise Nation. This is Millennium are playing I, so incredibly well. True. The first two-point play was because Jerd paved the way. The second was because of a fantastic relay and a good read on Rise. The third comes from Jerd. Oh, that sounds good. Third comes from Jerd <laughs> on the dart. And now they sit 6-0 up, standing very, very strong. And Miracles is even co contributing to the objective side of things. Rise have not had a chance to catch their breath. And Millennium, well, they're breathing right down their neck. Well, let's let's be fair. I mean, this it, if you're going to do a lot of damage, this is the side to do it from, sure, right? Absolutely. Now, I know this is brutal for two and a half minutes of the game, but this is absolutely not out of reach for Rise Nation. Not with as much as time as is left, and also with the fact that this is going to be swapping. But... Uh, the big thing here, you know, we'll, we'll look at the minimap and see. This is the first time we've seen Rise kind of pick up the drone and have a chance to make yeah, a play. What's that icon? Why is it red? It's yeah, always exactly. purple. I've never seen that red icon before. Fortunately, though, it does look like Looney has got an opportunity to break through. He's given us fight versus Tommy. It's oh, beautifully traded by Jerd, but they're slacked again. It's trade after trade. It's Wall Street here on breach, and now two for Rise Nation. They needed that to get back into this game, and now most definitely things are going to be staying competitive. It was not necessarily the. Uh, the overwhelming positioning from Millennium. It was simply the way in which they acquired the six that was so glorious. And, oh, oh a heat wave's gonna catch him. He can't go for the one-point play. That's the lineup we've been seeing an awful lot this weekend. 
Well, and now, now is the attempt he's able to put that through. Really solid stuff, and it, as, I, I'm really, it's kind of refreshing to see Rise Nation unaffected by the, st the strong start from Millennium. They're just back to their own game, resetting. And it looks like he, we could be seeing another one-point play here. They have control. Miracles is the one to try and break through, but look how passive they're playing. Where is this? Are they going for the intercept? What are you doing? That, nice. Okay, it will be Jerd. They're all sticking around at spawn. It turns out, yes. Yes, he was. Going for the what are you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm right. Okay. <laughs> Jerd able to pick it up, and now you've seen three unanswered for Rise. They're finally starting to show a little bit of life. But a good defensive hold, at least from Jordan Crew, as they're trying to find the kills. Jordan wraps behind one, and now they're pushing back out to middle. But there is still a player in lab. I believe that is Looney, who's going to be able to wrap from behind, find one. Can he get Jared inside? Wins that. That is two, and now trying to push out. There's a third to his right. Surely he's going to be dropped, drone off. Nice effort at an individual play there. Uh, you didn't really have a whole lot of options. You were kind of the lone man top middle there for the side of Rise Nation. I mean, it's one of those things where you just you can take the risk. You know, there's very little to lose should it go wrong. And that's the kind of dream scenario for you to go ahead and try and make that hero play. Tommy, you would think sometimes he was on a defense, but he's actually on the offense. He's sitting in the opponent's uplink and is not able to do too much with it. Now he's going to have to try and cross back through mid-map. It's not ideal. And Looney, in the meantime, is gathering so much ground. It's going to be Mercs to try and stop him or Miracles, do excuse me. Gets one, but there's going to be so many there. Now Madcat, I don't think he's going to have done enough. I heard a Kinetic as well to pave the way. And Rise are straight back in this game. The North American stabilized in 120 seconds. Yeah, this is like a tale of two halves in one half, right? I mean, it, it's 6-0. Millennium's crushing him. And all of a sudden, Rise Nation comes alive in a huge way. They may even be able to tie this up. If Classic can get to the one-point shot, he should be in he's range shortly. The interception opportunity is up, so he decides to take it to the left. He, is he, he going to go for two? Surely he gets the one. No, the interception is there. And Millennium will hold on to the one-point advantage. Quick interception. I mean, he saw him for a fraction of a second, and that was quick work from Jerd to go ahead and just maintain Millennium's lead right at the end of that one. And look at Tommy. He lines up three right in that round-ending kill cam. Catches Classic and even Octane as well. Just knocks him down with a huge VK. Solid stuff from everyone involved. And what a start. What a half. You're right. It was a game of two halves in the half. Some would describe it as a quarter. Is that, is that the word I was looking for? Uh -huh. could, could, yeah. could, a tale of quarters? <laughs> it doesn't sound as good. It definitely it sounds does Sounds like not. a really boring story about coins. <laughs> well, we'll start with Rise Nation. Is uh, you know they, they had the slow start in the first half. Can they, they amp it up a little bit here in the second half? Octane is going to find a kill, but it'll be traded out almost immediately as one dropping for his side. But with the two-piece from Slack, he, did he get it up for 15? Yeah, if he is. got up for 15, that is huge. He did. Wow. What a big, big play because that's almost a guaranteed one or two points for Rise Nation if he doesn't make that yeah. play. And that's really smart from Jud. It was very quick as well. He reset the armor just to survive for the 15-point reset. Or 15 seconds, excuse me. And so far, Rise Nation, they're kind of sitting there just stewing in anger as they realize that that could have been so much more. Jud, one man, takes those points away from them. And now look at this route. This is a fast route as well. Looking good for Rise Nation here on the second. Oh! oh! What was that taken away from him? The heat wave just steals it. That's not the first time we've seen that happen. What? It was his heat wave that went off, right? But what? No, he got affected by it. It was it cut his heat wave that went off. I guess did he tag a teammate? And then the, I think the Simtex is what really threw it off that came in from Millennium. I was so confused. Either way, he's not going to be able to convert it. And so... Back to the drawing board for Rise Nation. Is he going for that broken lineup? No, instead he is just going to go ahead and meet the RK5 of Mad Cat. And we do go once again back to basics. Mad Cat's been playing this an awful lot. He likes to just catch one close quarters on the drone before he starts to try and make the pass. And instead, it looks like Millennium realized that again, things have not gone their way. Lost too early, back onto yeah. the rooftops, and they want to keep things close. Those resets they're getting when they're two and three down, I, I can't express how crucial they are. Because if you're a team like Rise Nation, who's a good uplink team, as soon as you get two or three down, it is go. It is grab drone and go. The fact that you, yes, you don't have control on mid-map, but it's a big difference between that and giving up points. And let's not forget as well that the Millennium are now on the less favored side. It's a dream scenario now. It's just to try and get that damage control, make things a little easier for you to manage should the comeback be necessary. And you can see, since they started this side, what the game plan is. They're not playing nearly as aggressive. They're not trying to put on big points like they did early in that first half. They're trying to play a little bit safer. And now look for an opening when they get one or two down. That's exactly what they do. The one-pointer not going to connect, though. The gunfight going to fall as well. And now maybe an opportunity for Rise, but you still have one player. That's Tommy lurking around the inside lab. And he just get put to bed. It's slacked. Finds his 19th kill. Everyone is performing. There's not a single underperformance here that you would perhaps argue Octane. But he had his moments in search of destroy. And now Madcap, what a spectacular connection with his Tempest. You know, we, we talked about it. We've been talking about it throughout the entire series. Madcat versus Octane. 
It's it's been it's been Mad Cat in the response. That that's for yeah. sure. I mean, there, there's no argument there. I know I know the search was kind of back and forth, relatively even, but. Mad Cat has been dominating in these 19 and 17. Now you saw the sick eight streak he got to close out that first hard point. But on the flip side, let's see what Looney and crew can do with the drone. Trying to take it outside the top green, going to get cut down before he can do anything. Neither team has scored in three minutes in the second half. And I'm, I'm kind of, I can't help but be impressed by Millennium's defense here on the last favorite side. I mean, look at them go. Another fantastic hold. It's Mad Cat, who I swear has got almost the same amount of kills with his pistol than he has his rifle. Pulls it out close quarters, and he actually is going to tag up one for Tommy to finish. Now, there's only 1 minute 40 left. Rise, they're only 1 point away, and do not forget, it takes nothing but 5 seconds from Drone to 1 point. So this could come down to the final 5, folks. This would be one of the sickest halves I've seen of Uplink. If Millennium, no way. Millennium is no able way. to hold Rise Nation scoreless the entire second half when they switched over to the more preferred side, that'd be insane. You never see teams go scoreless when you're pushing towards Broken, ever. I genuinely think that might be a first. I genuinely do not believe that that would have happened again, or at least not in a competitive environment like this. Here at Call of Duty XP, the biggest Call of Duty tournament of all time. Man, that always feels good to say. Whew. It really, really does. And uh, we've now got 65 seconds. Rise Nation has got to find a point to at least push this to overtime. They've got control of top mid. They found a kill. That is a need directly at his team. Dick. Classic catches it for him. Not the most ideal scenario with 50 seconds what? left in one of the most important games of their career. Now Tommy pops the kinetic and he's going to take one. Excuse me, it was Miracles. And it could very well be the Miracle one point. Classic catches it. 40 seconds and we still do not have a clear-cut winner here in Uplink. It is the third map of the series and Classic's now trying to make the run. He's invested Psychosis, so he's looking golden. And can he take a step towards that golden medal as well? Not looking likely. 30 seconds. Two players standing in his way. Jerd's going to go ahead and invest a specialist, but he's still breathing. Octane the babysitter takes two heads off. Jerd and Madcap. Are going to be forced to watch for six seconds now as they're going to throw it in. Will this be two? Rise Nation claim it! 20 seconds! It's not over yet, but Rise have taken a stride towards making it so. It's Octane in position for the reset. It's there it. it is! Rise has GG. done it in the closing seconds. How does that happen after the team nade that you saw from Looney? Surely, surely you think Millennium's going to push three down. They're going to make the play. But in the closing seconds, Rise Nation gets the dunk and steals the victory. That comes down to the two. Are you kidding me, Rise Nation? Coming back and clutching it with seven seconds left on the clock. You see, it was Octane who threw the drone yep. out of the play, and they locked it up. Rise with the comeback win, now leading the series 2-1. Octane was that entire final minute. You saw him protect his drone carrier for the dunk at the end. Machine made a point of it. Two headshots in a row after his drone carrier got heat waved. He was about to easily get killed and traded on out. Instead, yep. Octane not only saves the day there, but you mentioned the reset at the end. When they needed him most, he showed up, and that's when Rise Station's at their best. Can't discount that dunk that came in either. Nope. They win it by just one point. This is a very close battle, and what's most surprising to me, though, is the fact that Millennium is leading these respawns for the majority of the game. Swanee's not here. Miracles was picked up three days ago. Yep. He's doing a phenomenal job of filling in but really the star on this game is mad cat let's take a look at the end of our next game though this is going to go over to charlie, charlie I believe. yes i believe we're going to take a look here this is cloud nine going up against orbit it is up like the end of round one currently cloud nine up four two but he runs into two enemy players for the hero play pops the camo throws and misses and that is going he's going to have to pay for that one dearly going into the second half without it Thanks now trying to make a hero play, but I don't think any need now. 4-2. Orbit on the preferred side didn't necessarily perform as well as they'd hoped to. Now with Cloud9 on the offense, you can only expect an absolutely devastating onslaught. And if you're Cloud9 right now, you're calm, cool, and collected because you know exactly what's about to happen. You're about to lay the smack down, finish out this map. But Orbit, if their players can come to life and contribute to the objective together, and also, so, somehow find some way to like get lace field out of the lobby. I think that'd be a pretty big part of their advantage in winning this map. Then we could see them come back, but everything is tipping in favor of Cloud9, as well as this frag grenade going down mid-map. He's able to connect with Swift Azor. Catching the wall run player, he tags him up a bit, but Nimble still able to win the gunfight. Close range with the VMP, that'll do it. Tempest top, AC, catches one, that's two. Middle map locked down by Assault's Tempest here and no one is able to answer to it. All he has to do is wait for his teammates to come up and play the objective. 
Shocking experience watching us all play this one. Excuse the pun. Lacefield now running on through on the offense. I saw she continue to get kills with that Tempest. Takes out Swift Azor as well. Lacefield on the run. He has a player in front of him to help him out. Cloud9 now piling up. Piling up outside the portal. Some would call it a queue or a line, depending on where you're from. I think he's going to be playing that one. Wait for a little bit of space now to get his teammates in on this one. Passes out to Palace. Manages to get taken down by Swift Azor. Two for Swift Azor. That's all of Cloud9 down. On board with Zeus, making a run there. This is the opportunity for Orbit. They have four dead. They're all collected to one side of the map. Their drone carrier, though, is the one that also has access to the dart. He's going to have to come up for this one-point play. He does have one just in front of him, a sub-player to guide him. That's going to net him a one-point play, and he's able to stay alive in the enemy base, 225 away from his next score streak and moments away from the Tempest, but as well as Lacefield moments away from the kinetic armor. He gets shut down by Nimble. That's a bigger kill than he might know about. Three kills go in favor. This should be another score for Orbit. There's oh, the beatdown, beat 25 <laughs> points, Miles. Swift Azor, if he gets this in, I think the snowball is going to be rolling towards Cloud9 in favor of Orbit. Look at this patient play. They're waiting to confirm the spawns before they get the dunk. They need to have mid-map control before they commit to scoring. It looks like they have gone for it. I'm not sure oh, if this was a good no. idea. Ah, but here comes a Hellstorm. Interesting choice. Now, can this pay off for them? Assault does have that drone in hand. Swift Azor only managed to get one with that. Now, not bad. He's going 22 and 9. Swift Azor having a stunning game so far. Orbit up by one at this point. Huge beat down there. Assault takes down back back I do not think back back saw that one coming. And now, big oh. one-point throw. No sweat whatsoever. Great shot from him. I think that that, that lightning, sh that or Hellstorm, excuse me, should have gone straight for the drone carrier. He saw one guy going up for the wall run and two in and around Q. I think that you go for the double kill before you go for the player that's alone on green. Especially because he didn't have the drone in his hands, and that's something you can kind of notice by the movement. Regardless, though, Orbit getting another opportunity with the possession. We're going to see some movement around mid-map. Two of his three score streaks have been exhausted. He still has the Tempest to work with, so if he can make a play here and stay alive in the enemy base, with it, that would be trouble. However, he dies. Aix is able to stop him. Ricky forcing the camo from, a, from an Orbit player. This is going down porta potties here, Miles. This is certainly a lot more intense than I thought it was going to be. Let's jump on board with the sort who's now mid map. Zeus contesting that next drone spawn. Looks like C9 are all over it. How are they going to attack this one? Two well, members of C9 mid map. Nimble gets taken down. Aix so close there. Assault just managing to get away by the skin of his teeth. Passes out to his teammate. Lacefield now drone in possession. Comes up against Zeus. Gets the throw. Doesn't manage to slow him down. Great job from Zeus there on the offense. Drone handled over to Nibble, I believe. Actually, it may have fallen out of play. No, Bakabek now has Drone in hand. Nibble has to battle for Palace. He does win that fight. Tied up 5-5 here with a minute and a half. I think they're just trying to play the waiting game just as Cloud9 was on the first half. We'll see if it pays off for them, but Cloud9 needs to get aggressive. The, that clock is winding down. They could close it here and avoid having to go into, half time, into overtime. Excuse me. Nimble finds the first the first kill, though, in this next engagement. Cloud9 still hovering around middle map. They're just letting them run the clock down. Assault finds a kill on Nimble, but it looks like the drone is going to be wrapped towards Pro Palace side. Only one player in the way to stop it. That's Ricky. Afterburner saving Baca back for this lower wall run. He could get just so much closer. Activating the camo. If he connects with this, that's huge for his team. He sinks it. One minute to work with. Orbit could close out the map with a win here. Cloud9 is not playing this half nearly as well as they should have. Afterburner protect, it paid off for him in an interesting way. Lacefield now, though, on That's the offense. Too dead. This is too dead. This is huge now. Lacefield could get a single point, though. Nimble and, and back are in position. But look at this high run. This has been so desperate. Look at that dunk. Huge dunk from Cloud9. 7-6. They've turned it around with 40 seconds remaining. And look at that. We have Aix in position to get the next drone. He's just taken it, gone for the throw. He didn't manage to get much more out of it. Can a member of Orbit get in position to slow this one down? No, I don't think they can. Lacefield, he may be able to get a second dunk here. This is absolutely huge for C9. Gets Score the streaks. one point throw. Streaks at the red. He's almost got lightning. He's Can seconds he away from Kinetic Armor. He has the dart. Just 25 points from being all lit gold. The Kinetic is popped. He's staying alive in the enemy base. 18 seconds. All he has to do is buy time. He does just that. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, no. Two seconds remaining. The drone is delayed. It doesn't look like there's going to be enough time for Orbit to take it and score. And certainly not for a dunk. I don't think so. Lacefield coming in there, trying to drop as much ordnance as he can on that place. And ladies and gentlemen, what incredible performance. Cloud9, the dunk and the one-point throw. Wow. They clutched up when it was necessary, but I got to say it was looking scary for quite some time. You see over on Charlie, it is going to be Cloud9 taking the lead in the best of five. This is one of the final two group play matches. They lead over Orbit, the last A and Z squad.
2-1 there. Over on Delta, Vitality up 5-3 over Envy in their second game, but the real action is happening on Alpha and Bravo. Oh, Alpha is really kicking off now. Millennium up against Rise Nation. It's capture the flag, and guess what? Millennium strike first, but right now you see Slack going for the counter cap. Flag in hand. They're trailing by one early, but the tying cap about to come in. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a game four. Flag equilibrium is reached, and we do once again prepare for another spectacular game. The last closing 10 seconds determine the uplink, and I'd love to see it go all the way again here in the capture the flag, because we are just two minutes into it, our fourth map of the series. <laughs> this poor Millennium player, he, he had flag jacket. Get a little aggressive. <laughs> he was so scared. <laughs> he could have taken a risk, <laughs> but he wasn't interested in rolling those dice. And so, currently nice and level, and it looks like Looney's going on the offensive again. Who will he meet? Is there anyone to deal with? It will be just a spawn in from Jerd. Is he in a position to finish off the job? He's not, and look at that. Tommy just got oh caught off in barn. Classic has just paved the way. One frag could very well have determined the fate of this flag. It's looking good. I don't think they're in a position. This is going to be number two. I was about to say Looney is going to lose his mind when he sees how his teammates forced the spawn directly on top of him, but the player didn't react in time. He still got out in the barn, had the cover, and gets the cap. What could have been a very, very frustrating moment for Looney ends up being a second unanswered cap here from Rise Nation. Jerd, I mean, he tagged him up. It was a fantastic spawn. It took him a moment just to process the information. Exactly, like, wait, yeah. flag grabbed. He looks at the minimap. He looks down and couldn't quite convert it into a kill. And so Rise will once again garner the lead. And Looney, I love this. The double smoke play and the heat wave to grab the flag. Octane That's does emerge teammate. victorious. Please don't beat up your teammate. And he's going to walk out through mid street. Jerd again looking a little dazed and confused. Where, where are they going? They're just <laughs> running laps. Millennium has no idea what's going on. They're basic. Continue to pick up the kills. But everyone dropping. It's going to be Looney. The one man show can't get to the edge. Tommy just filling up the kill feed with his HPK. He keeps on going four in very quick succession. The quad kill from the game changer. And indeed already he has saved the day. That stops it from being three very integral kills from him. And I do see an annihilator glowing gold. And I'll be intrigued to see if he doesn't do anything spectacular with that one. In the meantime, H60 does catch Octane. Rather insignificant, though. I feel like that may be in a, bit, a bit of a waste of resources there. There's so many more opportunities where that H60 could have made a bigger impact. Maybe perhaps a stalemate situation. That's true. That's true. But uh, it does find one. If it would have led to the score there, you'd be feeling pretty good about it. But ultimately, it is not. Now, we found uh, Swanee has re-entered the game. Oh, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> that, that's his position. That is where he's going to hold from. But uh, Miracle's being a little bit more aggressive, trying to get to mid-map. There are 60 seconds to go here. And we'll see if anyone can mm. get a cap here in the closing minute as Rise Nation still holding strong. So there is give or take 30 seconds now to try and format a play. You can, you can make that pull quick, nice and quick. And you have got specialists to invest. In fact, three are glowing for Millennium. Whether they choose to do that now, catch them by surprise, or go hard on the break, on the rip, if you're Maven. It's one of my favorite words. It does sound good. It does. It sounds badass. But now, currently, <laughs> we are going to be seeing some specialists. This is what I was talking about. He glows gold. But Miracles, I'm worried that there may be a little bit of overinvestment. You've got 30 seconds, and Slack has just pulled the flag. That's beautiful work from Rise Nation. He just spanks Jer down. Solid work from him with the lightning gun. 20 seconds. It's all on Tommy. It's oh all on Tommy, though. God. Can he get the stop? He has the Hellstorm to work with and the Lightning. Can he find the kills to stop the score? He cannot. It goes through. You use a streak. You use the Annihilator, and the cap still goes through. Rise in control. And I, sit, I was sitting here wondering, what are they doing? They're wasting specialists. Save it for the second half. And there goes Rise. Pulls out the Tempest, and that is an absolutely fantastic way to end it for the North Americans. Woo! 3-1 half in the first half of our fourth map. You, you could not ask for a better closing moment for Uplink for them or a better closing moment of this first half here in CTF. Not only the fact that they get the cap, but the fact that he uses the Lightning and the Annihilator to try and get that return. I, I get it. I get it. You know, Tommy, you had, you you had the four-piece earlier. He makes the hero play. You want to stop it there. You have a good opportunity to do so. But the fact that it falls short, that's got to be painful. Yeah, no doubt a bitter pill to swallow. But it's not out of the running for Millennium. They've got five, five minutes to forge a play. It's not out of the realms of possibility, but it is all about their start. And we're talking about strong starts, and that's often in CTF. You will see a team go for that quick cap. We saw it in the first half. And woof, look at Octane go. Just goes and takes the head off of Jerd, but quick to be traded. Mad Cat catches him. Barnes, such a very influential position for the defenders of this side of the map. You see Looney just darting in and out of windows. He's playing games, but Miracles is having none of it. Let's see, Classic rotating to the back. Uh, they got to play a little bit of defense now. I'll blow this up. You can see the purple arrows taking pretty much complete control of the map right now. Classic and crew going to have to play some solid defense here. 
but the pressure is coming in. I'm going to get to Miracle's POV as he's wrapping through Barn, looking to find Ooh. the kills in the back. He has Psychosis to work with as well, but it's the Scythe of Octane ready to line him up, looking for the Hellstorm picked out of the sky. No, it does go off. I thought he was able to pick it up for a second. And that was Tommy's last streak, correct? Yeah, that's all. No more golden bottom right-hand right. corner for Tommy. Slack's dart went down this way. Okay, now, as the dust does settle, we are starting to steal Mill Millennium. Pick up a couple in the kill feed. In fact, that's more than a couple. That's three. Looking for the fourth as well. It all falls to Slacked. Miracles is going to be first just to grab the flag on his back, but it is a bullet to the spine to shut him down. Madcap pulls out the Tempest. This is a weapon he thrives with, and look at him do it time after time after time. A third will not happen as Looney gets an impact kill. Hello. Oh, look at you, Excuse a North American me? caster with the knowledge. Is it because that binder I put together for you? Be honest. Be honest. Did you get that for me? That was all you.